So the evaluations that we're going to be going through today include the visual symptom questionnaire, uh, visual acuity testing evaluations, contrast sensitivity, central field scotomas or blind spots, visual field loss, visual neglect, accommodation, binocular vision, convergence, ocular motility, visual midline shift syndrome. Is anybody familiar with that term? All right, because we're going to learn about it. Uh, Post-traumatic vision syndrome. So we'll be going through evaluations to detect um, and score each of these uh, uh, deficits. Of all the tests and things that we get to experience then today, I want you to think about what's going to work best in your own practice. And you'll get hands-on to be able to run through each of these tests and really figure out how, how to use them, what you like about them, and what's going to work in your, in your program. Um, so if you do need to order then different tests, you'll, you'll have a good idea what it is you like and what you don't like. Let's go through um, the vision sy symptom questionnaire. That's on page 48. So a lot of um, a lot of my patients then, I will uh, you know after doing your basic evaluation where you've done your your manual muscle testing, your transfers, your ADLs, and, and all of those things, and I'll do a quick vision screening and determine if we need to go through additional vision evaluation. One of the things I'll have my patients do is this adult vision questionnaire. This gives me a good idea as to where to focus my evaluation on. What, what are the, the functional problems that your patient is having? And it also gives you an opportunity then to write functional goals. What are the problem areas and what are you going to work on to correct that so they increase function in these areas? Um, headache or facial pain can, can certainly be an uh, indicator of poor acuity. Are they squinting a lot trying to, to sharpen their focus? Um, but it can ha facial pain and headache can be from eye turns. It can, it can be from a number of things. Pain in your eyes with eye movement. So if a lot of people have held, lost that coordination, they're not you know, able to move the eyes in a coordinated manner, they start turning their head instead because it's a lot easier to turn your head than it is the little eye movements to focus on something. And they may have lost range of motion in the eye muscles and actually feel physical pain when they turn their eyes up, down, or side to side. Um, neck and shoulder discomfort, again, are they using their head more than their eyes to be turning? Or do they have a head tilt or a head turn? That may be experiencing then neck and shoulder pain. Dizziness, lightheadedness, nausea when performing close work, like computer work, reading, writing. Um, they may be having trouble converging the eyes together, turning them inward. Um, or they may have, be having trouble with that near focus, the accommodation. Um, dizziness when uh, bending down, standing back up, getting up too quickly. That might be telling you a little bit about post-traumatic vision syndrome where they are having difficulty with that processing that ambient vision, that peripheral vision, so that as they move through space, their balance is thrown off. Um, unsteady with walking, or if they drift to one side, they may have a visual midline shift. Their perception of midline is skewed, and that really makes them drift off toward one side as they're walking or reaching for items. Overwhelmed and anxious when working, or walking through a large department store, walking in a crowd. Again, lots of things moving around them. That may be an indicator of post-traumatic vision syndrome. Um, a lot of that is cognitive too, though, when a patient is first trying to, to cope with being back out in the world, uh, sometimes just processing cognitively a busy environment. Um, it's not only vision. You know, there's stroke impacts every, everything in your brain. So. But that could be one of the things is post-traumatic vision syndrome. Dizziness or off balance when walking down a long hallway or on a bold patterned carpet such as the one in this room. Uh, again, things may appear to be shifting or moving. Long hallways may appear to be skewed or tipped or tilted. Riding in a car, everything whizzing past you on the sides. Again, post-traumatic vision syndrome. We're going to work on that peripheral vision system. Um, if they've got a head tilt, 
Do they have maybe a field cut or a, a nerve palsy or an eye turn that's causing them to tilt their head a little bit so their eyes are level? Because one eye is not coming down equal to the other eye. A lot of times your fourth nerve palsies will have a head tilt. Do their posture tend to be more leaning forward or leaning backwards? Um, vision, visual midline shift syndrome, their, their sense of, of um, horizontal midline may be shifted up or down, causing them to be more flexed at the head or trunk or more extended. Poor depth perception or difficulty estimating distances may be an eye teeming problem or a perceptual problem where the brain is interpreting the vision uh, information that comes in and it's, it's poorly interpreti interpreting uh, depth or the 3D effect. Double vision overlapping or shadowed vision at distance or at near can tell you again about eye teeming problems. One eye might have a turn. Um, sensitivity to bright lights, photophobia is common with post-traumatic vision syndrome. Um, you might see your patient come into wearing sunglasses when they come in outpatient. It's more comfortable that way for them. Do they close one eye with near tasks or far tasks? A lot of my patients, you know, when they have double vision, they automatically, they don't even know they're doing it, they'll close one eye to get rid of that double vision. And um, I'll look right at them and say, do you, do you find that you're closing one eye for different things? And they'll, with one eye closed, tell me, no, I, I don't do that, no. And, hmm, okay. So their awareness of what's going on, we really need to do a lot of awareness so that they recognize the problem so that then they can work on it. So that's a, one eye closed, they are having double vision. It's, that's just what is happening pretty much. Um, skipping lines, losing their place while reading, that tells you about how well they're coordinating their eye movements, the saccades, the pursuits. They use their finger to keep their place on the page. Again, the saccades and the pursuits. Tiring easily with close-up tasks, reading and computer work. They just can't do it for very long. They get headache, they get blurred. Um, probably that's an accommodation problem or an eye convergence problem. So you're gonna work a little bit more on evaluating those tasks. Um, or distance and, and fatigue with distance vision. Um, there again, that eye turning, they may have difficulty turning the eye outward or relaxing the lens of the eye for accommodation. Um, blurred vision with up close tasks, that's accommodation and eye turn. Or words running together or appearing to move on the page, they may have difficulty with saccades, that, that, that eye jumping. Okay, so that gives you a kind of a, a nice overall idea of what the patient is experiencing and what you need to further evaluate.